live right now? Oh my God, we're live. I seem fun. The Diary of Jen Kirkman podcast episode 211. This episode is sponsored by Quip Talkspace and our new sponsor, Rent the Runway. Oh my God, you can't even believe how excited I am about that one. Now listen, if you're watching live, this is normally a podcast that I do from my home. And every once in a while I come to the studio, but I don't normally stream it because this is what it is. You're watching someone do a podcast. I think you, if you're a podcast person, you're probably hip to that that they can put cameras in them now. But uh, you're not watching NASCAR or something exciting. It's going to look like this, me sitting, me talking. So I don't want any, this is boring. Of course it's boring. It's a fucking podcast for boring people. People People who listen to podcasts have something wrong with them. And I include myself in this. We need to be talked to constantly, soothed, and just feel part of something. But we don't want to leave the house. So... If you are not that person, then of course you won't like this. And then, I don't think it. Save, save your comments. I'll say them all for you. She's a bitch. She's a cunt. She doesn't like Bernie. She's ugly. I got it. Anyway. Oh, my God. <coughs> How does that sound? My tour is officially over. And then what did I do? I go start booking dates already for next year. Now, I have one show left in Oklahoma City. Now, again, this is more for the listener, the watcher. Well, who cares? What? Jen, I am the only one freaking out about being on camera. You guys are fine. It's me. I get it. Whew. Okay. I hope you're noticing all the fabulous things here. Feminist AF for my necklace line on bobblebar.com. Oh, by the way, I should mention there's a 35% off Cyber Monday sale happening right now. Get yourself a feminist as fuck necklace and tell your Nana it means at and fun. And they have them in silver and all different kinds of colors. And there's ones that say cat lady or single or taken or over 40 or 30-ish. There's one that says I can't. There's one that says laundry day, uh, child free. Um, they're all silly expressions that I think are fun to wear around your neck. And some of them make a statement. Now, my whole this is not merch on the road. This is I literally have a necklace line. It's separate than me being a comedian. I don't bring them on the road with me because they're custom made. So I'm trying to like segue into fun things like designing. So this is that. Um, They are off sale December 31st. And today, Cyber Monday, 35% off with code Cyber35. If you go to JenKirkman.com, it's all on my homepage. Or go to my Twitter. It's there too. <clears throat> Bobblebar.com, B A U B L E bar.com. Now, I wasn't coughing before the mic went on, but um, I must have some morning phlegm. So, anyway, so here's the we're doing business up top, business up top, business up top. She's a busy businesswoman, she needs to tell you things. So, I am, I have two more shows left this year. Um, I will be in Oklahoma City this weekend, Saturday. The uh, the second um, at the Oklahoma Contemporary Arts Center. I love that place. This is a special show for women. Women only. Um, trans inclusive, of course. And I know there's so many. Now, I'm like the old lady who is trying to do this like progressive thing, like the Wonder Woman screenings, because it's a show where the money goes to um, organizations that support women's health. And especially in light of all this harassment going on, I thought it would be fun not only to do comedy that's really geared towards women um, without risking. I've had a lot of dudes at my shows this year. Their arms folded. They're booing me. I'm like, I'm just telling a story about a guy who chased me in a parking lot. Why does that offend you? So I thought it'd be nice. And then women who don't normally speak publicly, um, if they want to tell their me too stories, they can get on the mic. And it's just going to be like just a special lady affair for us to just feel safe and good. And, um, Apologies to all the great guys out there who would have loved to be part of it, but you can just come to any old show anytime and you'll be part of it. Um, I'll probably come to Oklahoma City again. I always go there. So, And uh, there's going to be fun raffles. I'll be raffling off necklaces and books and all kinds of things. I'll be there selling merchandise. It'll be very hands-on and I will be available before and after the show selling merch. It's like so communal. So I hope everyone goes to that. JenKirkman.com. Click tour dates. Um, And then my last show is my Jen Kirkman dysfunctional Christmas show, which is December 7th at the Hollywood Improv. I have friends who've been in Hallmark movies. I'm going to interview them. My friend Chris and I are going to do a sketch about uh, Mary finding out she's pregnant. Um, I'm going to do stand up. People are going to tell dark stories. I'm going to sing an Elvis song. We're throwing candy at you. Everyone bring an unwrapped book. 
uh, children's book, not don't bring uh, what's that David Foster Wallace book that everyone pretends they read. Um, no, not Confederacy of Dunces. Oh, you are so close. Oh, this. Oh, everyone's screaming at me. David Foster Wallace book. David Foster. David Foster Wallace book. All I can think of is his uh, essay, Consider the Lobster. Um, what is that book? I'm looking at it right now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do you think this is why he killed himself? Because people can't remember the name of his books. Um, Infinite Jest. Do not bring Infinite Jest to my Christmas show. Unless you want to give a copy to an adult. But this is a children's book drive. Barnes & Noble does a book drive every year. The books will be going to, I believe, it's either a school or library in downtown Los Angeles that needs help. And I'll be doing raffles at that show. And the money from that will go to the Los Angeles Food Bank. Um, So with all that business out of the way, I'm going to freak out on myself with this throat. Um. But that's what happens when four months of touring comes to an end is I start getting the phlegm and the rasp. So we're going to take, well, I'm not going to take that much time off. Um, I'll be back in New York City in January at Caroline's Comedy Club. I have uh, shows there already on sale. JenKirkman.com. Click tour dates. And um, I'm coming to Buffalo and Vermont and Indiana. And those aren't on sale yet, but you can save the dates. You can go to my website and see what the dates is. Yeah, if you join my email newsletter, I mean, you'll know all this the minute it comes out. Also on my website. What else can I tell you? And my tour next year is called the I Don't Give a Fuck Tour. Now, I don't know what that means exactly, but I thought it was snappy. And also, there's a joke I have about not giving a fuck, but it's not in a rude way. Okay. This is the worst. I know, it don't say koozie. It's cozy. It doesn't fit anything except this kind of bottle. It says, I am fun. Um... But I seem fun. I'm not fun. That's the joke. Okay. Somebody requested that I live watch a Hallmark movie. And um, and I did from my sister's house last week. God, that episode's long. Um, I almost crapped out halfway through. It was just like, let me just summarize the end. But I stuck with it. Um, and that comes out next week. So I'm just giving you plenty of warning. Um, oh, I forget the name of the movie. Because maybe you could watch along and you could tape it. Okay, let me look that up. Um, Hallmark 2017 movie about an organizer. And Hallmark 2017 movie about an organizer and a widowed dad. Oh, it came right up. Christmas in the air. Christmas in the air. So everybody, you have a week to go on your TV I'm 100. And go to the Hallmark Channel and find a movie, scroll through, called Christmas in the Air, record it, and you can watch along with me, or you can just watch it in advance so that you know what I'm talking about. Or you can listen to the episode and watch it later. But it's called Christmas in the Air. Um, It is about an organizer, you know, like someone who organizes your life, and a busy, widowed dad who's a toy maker. You can't even deal with how good this one is. So, I had asked you guys, and I I think all these episodes are going to have sort of a holiday theme. I'm sorry if that is upsetting to anybody, but, um, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, what I can tell you is that, um, what's our heart out today, Aaron? 10? What? Mm. So I can go to 10, 15? Okay, perfect. I was reading about, um, because I was, I was a little bit of a sloth during sync. St- Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. Um, I had two glasses of wine every day. That was, that was big for me. I don't normally drink every day, or even once a week. I don't drink, um, and two glasses is a lot. Um, I don't film to the top. I'm I use those big ones, and I kind of just do like a quarter full so I can do this. Um, but um, yeah, so. Now, my friends might be like, what are you talking about? I've gone out with you for dinner, and we've gotten blitzed. Um, You know, five wines for me is blitzed over, like, five hours in food. But that's once in a while. That's once every five months. But this, like, the way that people, like, I just have wine at home. I don't do that, really. It's not worth the extra calories. I do love the little, like, just that warm little first sip wine feeling. But um, 
I was just like, I'm going to let myself enjoy. And it was totally fine. Um, it's a good way to keep warm. But I actually, oh, I already talked about this in the podcast because I recorded one from home. I actually kept up with Pilates during the week that I was home. So that, I think that's why I didn't put on any extra poundage and lose anything. But Thanksgiving, it's not the holiday to lose weight. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, what was the fucking point of that? I don't remember. Because I wanted to talk about how exciting my two glasses of wine were with my mom. Like, what? I went off, people. I partied, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Sorry, I keep doing that sound. Um, oh, the point is, is the thing I'm... A, I'm... Something's wrong with my brain! <sighs> God damn it. The point is... I've, I'm about to read you a thing about Princess Margaret and what her daily life was like. And you're basically going to kill yourself because your life isn't this good. Like, everyone right now who's watching at their desk, you're going to be like, my life sucks. And it does compared to Princess Margaret. Okay, what is happening? I'm trying to take a selfie. And my phone just froze. Why is life so hard? Do you think anyone's ever going to be able to tell me? My camera just stopped working. My whole phone. And this isn't the new fancy one, but it's the 8 or whatever. The thing is, has some weird... Oh, I have a lot of windows open. Oh, my God. It has some weird glitches. Um, I can't believe it's not letting me take a selfie. God, life's really hard. I'm going to reboot it. Okay. So, I don't really know who Princess Margaret is. Like, where is she from? Who is she related to? Maybe just to, to get this quick thing out, I should let you know. Because I don't even know. Um... Countess of Snowdon. Where the fuck's that? Uh, was the younger daughter of King George the Sixth and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, and the only sibling of Queen Elizabeth the Second. Margaret spent much of her childhood in the company of her elder sister. So wait, how old? Okay, she was born in 1930 and died in 2002. There you go. Okay, so this was her life. This is an excerpt from... I guess, a book that's coming out about her. Um, Princess Margaret woke up at 9 a.m. and had breakfast in bed, followed by two hours in bed listening to the radio, reading the newspapers, and chain-smoking. Done. Her life is better than all of ours. And she lived till 71 with the chain-smoking. Now, I don't know how if the last years of her life were terrible, if she had emphysema, but... God, that sounds amazing. Okay, so I don't, it gets so much better. Then she'd spend an hour in the bath. And after a lengthy primping session, had a vodka pick me up at precisely 12.30 p.m. After that, it was a four course lunch. I don't really care about the, I don't like vodka. Um, so precisely 11 a.m., she gets in a bath run by her lady's maid. And then the vodka pick me up at 12.30. Then at 1 p.m., she joins the Queen Mother for a four-course lunch served from an informal silver dish. I'm sure it's, like, nicer than your nice stuff. With half a bottle of wine per person. Hey, that was like me over Thanksgiving. Two glasses. Um, my two glasses didn't really make, didn't even take up half a bottle. It was like a quarter. Uh, half a bottle of wine per person plus fruit and half dozen varieties of cheese. <gasps> oh, my God. That sounds so good. And it doesn't say what she did after that. Like, what did she do from 4 to 10 p.m. or whatever? But we don't know. Um, oh, my God. I have the most exciting story, but I don't remember if I already told it on one of the episodes. So I'll just quickly say it. No, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's it's stupid anyway. Um, because I think it might be... I feel like the information... I met an actress who starred in a Hallmark movie that premiered this year, a new one about a lawyer who gives up her job as a lawyer to become an ice sculptor year round. And because she went back home to save her family's, to save the town's ice sculpting contest, which no town has ever, but it cost $10,000. And I, I don't know. It's one of the ones that I sort of skimmed through, like it was on in the background. I couldn't really understand what was happening. And um, this woman came to one of my shows at the improv 
uh, my monthly show, Lab Test, which is back in 2018. Tickets are already on sale. I do it in a little intimate setting um, at the Hollywood Improv Lab space. Cute little cabaret, about 40, 50 seats. Beautiful. Believe me, it's beautiful. I have the best cabarets. So she came because her friend is a listener of the podcast. Hi, sir. I forget your name. And he's like, this is my friend. And she was in that movie. And I was like, oh, my God. And she is aware that the movies are perhaps slightly ridiculous. Um, and she was really fun to talk to. So, but that's her story. And I'm not going to ruin it for you. So anyway, I thought today I would, uh, how long have we been rolling there, kiddo? Ah, okay. I just want to make, you know, guys, I've got new advertisers today and I want to do right by them. I want to do right by them. So before we get into the listener emails, I will tell you, I am loving my Quip toothbrush. Now, here's the deal. Um, It's a subscription service and they probably don't want me to put it that way, but I'm just, before you get in your car and start running to CVS, let, let me explain to you how it works. Okay. So, um, Quip, Q-U-I-P, the new company that's refreshing the way people brush their teeth. It's an electric toothbrush. It's a slim design. It's not one of those bulky Bulkersons and you don't have to like charge it on a thing. That's the best part. That packs premium vibration and timer features into an ultra slim design. So it kind of like goes off when you're supposed to switch to a new section of your tooth. It's amazing. And it doesn't have a big price tag. It's basically like if Apple designed a toothbrush, but without the big price tag. Um, And it's half the cost of the bulkier brushes whose names shall not be mentioned. (laughs) You can even subscribe to receive new brush heads on a dentist recommended three month plan for just five bucks, including free shipping. Five dollars, people. Cheap, but not cheap quality. It's backed by leading dentists and was named as one of Time Magazine's best inventions of 2016. They won a 2016 GQ Grooming Award and made it on Oprah's 2017 New Year's O list. Quip starts at just $25. This is ridiculous. They are just throwing something at you for basically for free. And also, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming people brush their teeth, but having good oral health impacts your overall health. Even like bad oral hygiene is linked to heart disease so don't fuck around with your teeth people okay so anyway here's how it goes you go to getquip.com g-e-t-q-u-i-p.com slash fun to get your first refill pack for free with your quip electric toothbrush that's a great deal that's your first refill free at getquip.com g-e-t-q-u-i-p.com slash fun now I have been using this. I took it on the road with me. Oh, it also has this cool feature where you put the toothbrush in it in its holder so that the bristles aren't exposed, but you can affix, asfix, asphyxiate, affix the holder to your mirror in your bathroom. Now, don't keep it near your toilet. You're not supposed to keep your toothbrush on the same side of the sink that's closer to your toilet because when you flush, things fly out. They didn't tell me to mention that, but I just, I heard that once and I, I think about it all the time. So... Keep your thing uh, affixed to the mirror. You can take it off and you can put it back on. I took it with me traveling this week. It was perfect. And it's like smaller than a long toothbrush. So it fits in my little travel size bag so perfectly. Seriously, you don't need a big expensive toothbrush to get the oral care that you need. Get the same refreshing clean with something simpler that will give you the best brushing experience you've ever had. 75% of us don't refresh our bristles or visit the dentist on time. That's why you need Quip. It's just going to automatically come to you every three months. And it has its own toothpaste, which gives, uh, strengthens your teeth, gives your mouth a perfect clean feeling. I can attest to that. So let's do it. Getquip.com. It will be love at first brush. All right. So this is what I wanted to do is I had, so again, this is going to be, you know, kind of a holiday, um, Can you jack up my headphones again, Erin? People, unless my headphones are so loud, I start pushing my voice. So, oh, this is, that's good. So, okay. I had asked people to write in about Die Hard because I, I'm just like, I don't see it as a Christmas movie. I mean, yes, it takes place at Christmas, but I think if we start, we have to, we have to build a wall somewhere, okay? 
By the way, this is the beginning of the wall that Trump is building to Mexico. Um, I don't know why he started at the All Things Comedy Studio, but it's it's starting. And it'll be great advertising, too. So, um, yeah, the wall is being built. But we have to build a wall around... We've got to protect Christmas movies and not just a, well, it started at Christmas. Well, that doesn't mean it's a Christmas movie. And, and, I'll, and I'll say the perfect thing. I'm writing a script for the ABC network that will be due right before Christmas. Busy businesswoman I am. <clears throat> and it's about a girl who um, got dumped on Christmas. And so the first scene is Christmas. And then we jump and it's February. And then we never talk about Christmas again. It's not a Christmas sitcom. It just begins at Christmas. So don't, so I am the creator of something just like Die Hard. And I, what the fuck? (coughs) This has not happened. Sorry, it's acid reflux, folks. Or just a little bit of, maybe it's just a little bit of uh, post-nasal drip. Anyway, people, I am not even including myself as an author of A Christmas Thing. So just know that I see both sides. I see mine and yours. Yours is wrong. Okay. But let's take emails from people who wanted to weigh in. Um, oh, someone sent me a beautiful photo of she was staying in an Airbnb And the room number was 9-11, and she wanted me to know that. I appreciate that. Thank you. We got our 9-11 reference. Oh, oh, and I'm so excited because um, I'm going to be spending Christmas in New York. And one of the things I'm going to do, one of my fans works at the 9-11 Memorial Museum, and she gave me a free ticket. It expires at the end of the year. So one of the things I'll be doing is going to the 9-11 Museum. (laughs) And that's such a JKL Christmas. And then, um, yeah, I'm so excited. So anyway, um, Die Hard. This is from Julia. I don't consider Die Hard a Christmas movie. I suspect more dudes might categorize this as a Christmas movie. Yes, an office Christmas party, but for me, I don't think of this one as a Christmas movie. Um, Oh my God, isn't it? On a randomly related note, and in case you wanted a 9-11 reference, people, it's all coming together. I did not read these in advance. I'm just open and I'm willy-nilly. And this woman's Sometimes the universe is just really in sync, you know? I did go to a meditation class last night where they put crystals all over you, so maybe that's why I'm having such synchronicity with 9-11 references today. White woman podcasting alert. Okay, I don't really think that's why, but just in case someone takes it out of context. Don't, I'm never reading the comments on this. Guys, please stop sending me this. I love my fans, my listeners. Do not send me articles where people are talking shit about me or podcasts. I don't want to know. I I know that they're out there. Every day, I'm aware that I am hated, especially for this Louis C.K. thing, which uh, I'm not hated for anything to do with him except... I talked about it awkwardly once on my podcast years ago and then took it down because I was getting harassment, not from him, but from people. And then now there's this whole thing that I'm involved in some cover up. It's insane. I'm like, I'm just a girl who talked on a podcast that she didn't think anyone listened to four years ago and maybe mentioned that Louis was known for jerking off in front of people, but I didn't know who they were. But what what the fuck? And uh, I wasn't even offended or saying he should have his career taken away. I was just saying, uh, it was this, actually a very selfish story about myself. I was talking about how I kept getting reviews in Melbourne, Australia, that my show was dirty. And it was so innocent. I talked about having a one-night stand with a young boy. Well, he was 23. After my divorce. And how I did not like it. And it didn't, I don't even get into dirty stuff. I don't even say sex stuff. I, I, I say, like, spent the night. And they were like, <clears throat> this rotty, bonchy, bonchy body raunchy show dirty and I was like dirty I'm not dirty and I was like what about like someone like Louie who's like his whole act is dirty it's basically like a confession to who he is and in real life he's kind of dirty so I've heard and so I've experienced him saying stuff to me and that's what I said on my podcast like when are women going to be allowed to be as dirty as they want to and um and then I I just kept talking and I got 
printed by all these papers saying it got twisted, a game of telephone, and I was saying he touched me, and then I took it down. They're like, she's being paid off by him, but for some reason they were mad at me about it, like not him. Like it was so nonsensical. <clears throat> and so certain outlets are still talking about it to this day. Um, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The call is being pushed to tomorrow. I'm on a plane all day. Hey, everyone. Sorry. I am on a plane most of tomorrow. I leave at... Sorry, I just had a business thing. Busy businesswoman. I leave at 7 a.m. and land in New York City at 2.30 p.m. Um, and I had... So... As soon as you can because I had some things in New York City tomorrow and I'll need to reschedule ASAP god damn it I had my whole day oh well that means I can go to Pilates today oh great okay anyway so anyway what the fuck was I saying how did that get into I don't know oh I said white women podcast comments okay on a randomly really re- related note, and in case you wanted a 9-11 reference, I can't believe people advertise on this podcast. I guess it there's I guess that thing of like we don't care about the content isn't like a thing anymore. Maybe they do. Um, in case you want a 9-11 reference, I believe rentals of Die Hard skyrocketed after 9-11 because Americans wanted to see an American kick some ass against terrorists. Um, I suspect this isn't news to you but I couldn't resist a 9-11 reference. Actually, I didn't know that because I don't even know the year Die Hard came out. So who knows? 1988. What? That long ago? Yeah. Well, when did Moonlighting stop? It was before that. Well, it was still on the air. That's all he was known for. I didn't know that he was in Die Hard in the height of... Oh, yeah, it went until 89. So, Wow. So he was like TV star, movie star, but he did like a couple bad movies before Die Hard. Yes. I didn't realize that he, I thought it was after he was well established. Like, mm. oh, wow. This this broke him, basically. It, it broke me too. Yeah. I'm broken now because people think it's a fucking Christmas movie. If I may correct that email, uh, they're not terrorists, they're thieves. Spoiler oh, alert. in Die Hard? Spoiler alert. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe, yeah, we could just say they wanted to see Americans kick some ass against bad guys or gals were any gal thieves in that no all dudes hmm. see they, they missed it was before the um women can be thieves to uh realization yeah that that we have now that they like, did have an asian guy though oh, okay yeah and well a, and a i feel like th- there's always an asian and a black guy in those kind of movies but they always i don't think they think of now that now they realize they can put women in a hot leather outfit and she can be a thief too. Yeah. So, um, congrats, ladies. You've really come a long way. <laughs> well, here's someone else saying, um, "Hey, Jen, so happy you mentioned how bad that Paul McCartney Christmas song is. It literally makes me walk out of whatever store I'm in when it plays. Me too. I would play it for you right now, but I'm afraid I'll get sued. Um, Die Hard. It's one of my favorite. With a U. Where's this guy from? Movies, and in recent years, it seems to have become cool to say that any film that happens to take place at Christmas is a Christmas film. Thank you. I don't think it is. For me, a Christmas film needs to be Christmas-themed and have a high cheese factor. It needs to be sentimental and comforting. Well, again, some people are comforted by ass-kicking. In the UK, we have a channel called Christmas 24. Oh, I know. I know about Christmas 24. I have played the UK, um, you you know, twice, actually. <clears throat> Uh, I was there. What the hell is happening? I was there. Um, when was it? Um, two Novembers ago. Two Novembers ago. And it was right after Thanksgiving. No, it was right before Thanksgiving. And all the Christmas stuff was already up. And I was staying in um, some kind of a, a flat they put me up in. And I watched... I had Christmas 24 on in the background or whatever it's called. And, you know, it was not my culture, so I couldn't, as if American and British culture is so different. But you know what I mean? It wasn't like the usual cast of characters, like your Candace Cameron Bure, your Lacey Chabert, your Alicia Witt. So 
I was like, okay. I mean, I'm glad it's on, but I don't know these people. Um, but... <clears throat> Oh, this is my sphenoid sinus acting up. I forgot. I have a thing in the back of my nose that I could get surgery on um, because it's near your brain. They stick a balloon up and they drain. I've had this blockage probably for 10 years. It's like sometimes you'll get a cold or an infection and this blockage never leaves. It has to be drained. And there's a tiny hole in it and it drips, post-nasal drip down. Um, And then sometimes it doesn't. It's sort of like an on again, off again thing, sort of like Sam and Diane on Cheers. And so my um, doctor, my my otolaryngologist or whatever, um, what the fuck? Uh, Anyway, and for the future ones. Okay, <clears throat> so, sorry, I, it's bit Monday morning at 9 a.m. Everyone's back. This is what I fucking hate about vacation. I work a little bit every day so that I never get overwhelmed. And I send out a bunch of emails over Thanksgiving because that's how I do. If you're in my life in any capacity, if you're an agent, a manager, someone who helps me out with stuff, I'm like, you don't need to respond now. I know it's Thanksgiving. I'm sitting on the couch finally looking at my to-do list. Ba 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 And then all the answers are coming in now, Monday at 9 a.m. And I'm like, Jesus. So, anyway, die hard. Okay, yeah, I, I get it. Uh... If I was to accept Die Hard as a Christmas film, I'd have to then say Gremlins is my favorite Christmas film. It's Christmas-themed, has a Santa presence, and a nice cheesy sentiment at the end. Yeah, it has little evil creatures, but then they could pass as elves. In summary, no to Die Hard being a Christmas film. Gremlins, I forgot, was at Christmas. But they don't learn anything at the end has nothing to do with Christmas, so that's not a Christmas film either. Christmas favorites, Die Hard. Um... My favorite Christmas movie, Home Alone. Ugh, I don't like that one. I'm 31, so I was the perfect age when it came out. It's funny and charming, and the music is gorgeous, and everyone is amazing in it. I just missed my window of having a crush on Macaulay Culkin. I think. Wait, how old is he? How old? Yeah, he's 37. Okay, so I'm. he's six years younger than me. So when he was in... My Girl, remember that movie where he died of a bee sting, spoiler alert? And her dad was, what's his name? from Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. His best friend was a girl whose dad was an undertaker, and they lived in, you know, a house that had a funeral parlor underneath. And Macaulay Culkin was her best friend. And I knew watching it, when did My Girl come out? What year did My Girl come out? I bet it was 88. Yeah, I think it was 90 because he reminded me, 91. So I knew in 91, and I was 16 in 91. I was like, and he was 10. So I was like, if I were 10, that's the little boy I'd have a crush on. Because I had a crush on a boy my age who looked just like that um, and was as sweet as him. And, uh, And we ended up dating for a little bit, and then now he's married. It didn't happen in that order. It wasn't like we dated, and then he's like, I gotta get married. It was like, I moved on, I moved to New York. Anyway, um... So I always miss my Macaulay Culkin window, but I always feel like I would have had a crush on him if we were the same age growing up in culture. Um, mine was more, my heroin addict of choice was River Phoenix. That was my crush. Um, and uh, and I hear Macaulay Culkin is doing better, which is good to hear because I root for him. Anyone with a fucked up childhood whose dad took all their money, I root for you. I'm rooting for you. I hope he is okay. Um, but I, I just don't care about Home Alone. I think because I look at it and I see the tragedy of a child being... Uh, I'm talking about the real person, not this character. The tragedy of a child being um, in the business and having shitty parents. So I can't look at that movie. And I'm so, <laughs> sorry if I'm ruining it for everyone else. But all I see is someone who's already on track to have addiction on track to have addiction problems and I just feel sad for him so whatever Uh, she says the music is gorgeous and everyone is amazing in it and as I learned on a recent live episode Donald Trump was in Home Alone 2 so I ain't gonna be watching that anytime soon Um, 
She said, Die Hard. It's not a Christmas movie. Three for three. In the traditional sense, it's not about the holiday or the spirit. There's no Santa or busy businesswoman. Nobody learns. Well, that's a Hallmark Christmas movie. Nobody learns about giving or family or any of that. It just doesn't have any of the many qualities that make up a Christmas movie. And I feel like you can watch it at any time of year, whereas I wouldn't watch a Christmas story in June. I just was thinking of that. I heard um, a Christmas song this morning. I went to get my hair blown out. And I was like, I'm in the mood for this. Now, if I heard it in July, it's like for some reason, it's like, ah, it feels wrong. Now, my sister and I sometimes have watched Elf in July for no reason, but um, my my least favorite Christmas movie, Elf, I don't get it. I try to, but I don't. What? 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 I think you're too young because it is a nod to the animatronic Rudolph, which is so ingrained in my DNA that if you weren't a fan of Rankin and Bass Rudolph growing up, I don't know if you will get Elf, but I'm I need a moment because it's just... It's wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> um, my least favorite Christmas song, Wonderful Christmas Time by Paul McCartney. Ugh. I want to die when I hear that song. It's infuriating and awful and obnoxious, and it gets stuck in my head. It's stuck in my head right now. Christmas song that makes me cry. I know it's cliche, but the Christmas shoes. The fuck song is that? The Christmas shoes. I'm going to look that up. The Christmas shoes. Song. Is it new? It's, it's got to be new. No. It was almost Christmas time. There I stood in another line, trying to buy that last, get, last gift or two, not really in the Christmas mood. Standing right in front of me was a little boy waiting anxiously, pacing around like little boys do, and in his hands he held a pair of shoes. His clothes were worn and old. He was dirty from head to toe. And when it came his time to pay, I couldn't believe what I heard him say. Sir, I want to buy these shoes for my mama, please. It's Christmas Eve, and these shoes are just her size. Mm, that doesn't rhyme. Could you hurry, sir? Daddy says there's not much time. You see, she's been sick for a while, and I know these shoes and make her smile and I want her to look beautiful if mama meets Jesus tonight what the fuck he counted pennies for what seemed like years then the cashier said son there's not enough here what if she did meet Jesus and he's like so not into shoes he's like okay great she's like I've wore these for you Jesus um then he turned and looked at me he said mama made Christmas good at our house though most of the years she just did without tell me sir what am I going to do somehow I've got to buy her these Christmas shoes so I laid so I'll never forget the look on his face when he said mama's gonna look so great sir I want to buy these shoes for my mama please um, we get it he pays for them how much could you hurry sir daddy says there's not much time and I know these sh okay it just goes over and over and over Wait, it doesn't say if the person ever bought him the shoes. It just keeps going over and over. My dad says there's no time she would want to wear them for Jesus. Oh, it's a Christian gospel song released in 2000. Okay, so that's why I don't know it because... So I feel like Christians won't mind if I play a little bit of it. Um, I thought it was like a Toby Keith song or something. Uh, anything where someone's dying and the little kid is being so sweet about it and like almost an adult, like they're able to... <laughs> How long can this... Okay. All right. And I'm not making fun of Christianity. You, you all know my stance. I love all religions, and I think it's great. The shoe display in the music video is so random. It looks really bad. And they look like a size four. No, I can't with this guy's voice. When I stood in another land And the mama said Jesus, you wanna look good In the shoes Standing right in front of me Little boy Am I gonna get in trouble with YouTube Copyright? Oh, yeah. Aaron's nodding But I made up the lyrics <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, we should be okay but... That was parody, everybody Yeah. I'm not making fun of it, but that guy's voice Is too much for me Listen, sometimes yeah. there's... He's like a dime store Bob Seger. Oh, that's great. <laughs> dime store Bob Seger. So is Bob Seger. No, I'm just kidding. Hollywood Nights. Do you know that that song is not on iTunes, or at least it wasn't years ago when I was... I was desperate for a Hollywood Nights fix. And I downloaded it five times before I realized I kept downloading covers. Oh. Like, not even covers done by, like, Aerosmith, but, like, literally someone doing karaoke. <laughs> I mean... That song is so good. Um, okay, what what minute are we at? 40. 
Oh my God, I got to talk about Casper Mattress. You guys, so I'm I'm away for a week, right? And I'm staying a... Oh no, we're not talk, doing Casper Mattress today. Oh my God, delete that. Ignore that. Rewind. Rewind. Okay, I need to talk about... I am a member of Rent the Runway, okay? It's renttherunway.com, and I have... It's a place where you can rent, like, really expensive clothes, or just really nice clothes, and some of them aren't expensive, but it's... It's a, a lot of it is stuff that maybe you wouldn't, you know, afford in your own life. Like, I'm going to buy this $700 silk blouse. And you rent them for uh, a certain period of time. I'm an unlimited member, so I pay a certain fee every month. And then I can, it's almost like the old Netflix where you can keep the clothes as long as you want. And you have three items and you send them back. And uh, so I use it all the time. I've been using it for years. I use it because I go on the road a lot and I'm always taking pictures with the fans. Hi, everybody. And I want to look like I'm wearing a different outfit every time, but there's only so many clothes I can buy. If I'm doing eight shows a month, I can't keep buying all the shit. And so I love it. I rent different things and I've even fallen in love with some things and I ended up buying them that you do have an option to buy. So I couldn't believe when Rent the Runway wanted to advertise on iSeam Fun. I am seriously have been using this product for years. I'm obsessed with it. It's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And I've even gone to their store in New York City. Now, that's I have to read like the official copy. So it's perfect for like you just especially if people want to simplify their closets like I don't want this stuff. And you're like, oh, what am I going to wear? This helps. So I am introducing Rent the Runway's unlimited membership, Jen Kirkman's one. You get unlimited access to a constantly rotating dream closet full of designer styles that you can keep as long as you want and swap anytime. And I got to tell you, there are so many styles to pick from. You you basically have to keep like a like, you know, you have to keep a, a section of things you like because it's not like there's just five things on the website. There's a billion. And it's like designers like Diane von Furstenberg and Theory and Tori Birch. There's jewelry. There's pocketbooks. Pocketbooks is a purses. You could have like a super expensive Kate Spade purse and be like, oh, yeah, I bought it. Um, it's the only place you can rent styles from over 450 top designer brands such as Vince, Theory, Tori Birch, Derek Lamb, Opening Ceremony, Marnie, DVF, and more. And seriously, there's even beautiful ga- like Marquesa gowns on there that you can get for holiday things. Oh, my God. It's perfect. Um, it's not only cheaper than buying, it's faster and easier to free shipping and dry cleaning on every piece. I got to admit one time I went to a party last year. I was, I had rented like this beautiful fake fur coat. I got to admit I was, I was in a mood. I was in a, I felt like I was a really bad actress in that movie home again that I did. And I had a really tough night of filming because I was like, I suck at this. And then I had to go to a birthday party the next night. And I was still feeling that like weird shame of like, I think I sucked. And everyone was like, oh, my God, she blows. And I bummed a cigarette off someone, which is something I shouldn't have done. And I was wearing my Rent the Runway fake fur coat. I'm like, this smells like smoke. But you send it back and they clean it. Maybe they didn't want me to say that. Maybe or maybe they want me to keep it real. Go to renttherunway.com or download the app. You got to download the app. That's what I have. And choose from tops, dresses, handbags, many more for any occasion. If you fall in love with any style, you can buy it at an exclusive discount and keep it forever. 70% of unlimited members actually report spending less money on clothes after joining. This is a million percent true. I literally never shop for clothes anymore. I have my basics and then I add the rent the runway to when I have a special occasion or I go on the road. Absolutely. So join 6 million members who make Rent the Runway the largest clothing rental company in the world. Now, go to renttherunway.com and download the app to get 25% off of your first month's unlimited membership with promo code FUN at checkout. renttherunway.com, promo code FUN. Now, renting provides a great way to get a ton of variety without committing... um, Oh, we have this. Select four pieces at a time. Keep them as long as you want. And when you're ready for something new, swap any of your pieces for fresh styles. If you fall in love with a style, you can buy it at an exclusive discount and keep it forever. I think I just said the same thing twice. (laughs) Oh, my God. And I've also gone to the flagship store in New York City, which is so fun. But it's changed my life, people. And uh, and they come in these cool bags, and you literally don't do, you put it back in the bag, they already have the shipping label for you, you just put, you don't have to go print a shipping label, it's so easy, it's so easy. 
So thank you, Rent the Runway, for being part of I Seem Fun. And if you guys, I know you guys like my clothing, and you're always like, where'd you get that? It's most of the time I'm going to say Rent the Runway. So, okie dokie, let's keep on this. I know this is probably like the most boring episode ever. I don't care. Let's do some things so we get the diehard thing. I'm going to have people talk about their favorite things in a minute. Um, Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. I saw it in the theater when I was 16, and that was July. So for nearly 30 years, I've associated it with summer. Thank you. And 90% of the times I've seen it since, I haven't been anywhere near Christmas, despite its setting and Let It Snow playing over the closing credits. And that's just one of those, I know exactly what they're doing with Let It Snow. They used to do it in Moonlighting. I call it Killing to Oldies. They put an oldie song on while something fucked up is happening. So it'll be like, you know, like, boom, 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 boom. The night we met, I knew I needed you so. And someone's like strangling someone and putting them in a body bag. And you're like, that's weird song to play during that. And I bet Let It Snow is like, all the bad guys are dead. Let it snow, let it snow. I get it. I get it. That That's not a Christmas movie. That's ironic music choice. It's like when they play scenes of Vietnam and then Louis Armstrong's What a Wonderful World is Over. It's like, oh, it gets you. I just don't associate it with Christmas. And there are no Christmas specials or movies I enjoy watching before November or after December 25th. So it is therefore not a Christmas movie. Besides, there have been five diehards and only the first two took place at Christmas, which means the franchise exists outside of Christmas. yippee ki I thought another one was at Christmas? I didn't even know there were five diehards. Two minutes. Aaron agrees. There's five. He can confirm. Only one and three are good. You mean Die Hard 1 and Die Hard 3? Yeah, two's okay, but it's not as good. Four and five? Is he getting too old to be doing it? No, they're just ridiculous. He, like, hops on a jet in four. Oh, that's insane. Yeah. You mean he on the wing? He hops onto a jet. And how high does a jet go? Uh, pretty high. I saw a picture the other day of two daredevils playing... Um, like tennis on a plane that was flying um, above something. But it was those old-fashioned like Wright Brothers planes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, but it still was crazy to me that they were standing on the wings of it. But it can be done, but not a jet. No. I mean, you literally wouldn't even be able to hold on. No. You would be thrown off, even if it was just taxiing down the runway. How do you even hold on? I'm I'm so angry for you. (laughs) I'm angry for everybody. Um... Favorite movies. Okay, so now I'm just getting into the favorite things. I asked people to email me their favorite things. Before we do, let me just tell you that one of my favorite things is going to therapy. You in therapy, Aaron? No. Well, that's why your life is spiraling. (laughs) Aaron just said before the podcast, he goes, my life is spiraling. I go, Aaron, you should go to therapy. He goes, I can't. I'm just kidding. He didn't say any of that. But some of you, some of you, now I've been saying this. I've been saying, guys, you get your beach body for summer and you get your... (laughs) I, you get your mental health head for winter, right? Let the body go. Time to eat. Put on a sweater. You've got to prepare your mind for going home. I went home. I'm in therapy, and I still sobbed in bed for two hours because I just can't deal with Trump supporters. So here's the deal. Now, that's I didn't make a very good pitch for therapy. But what was cool about it was I was able to feel my feelings Without it being, it wasn't like a dramatic stomping off. It was just like, I need to go away, feel my feelings. These are feelings. These are not facts. And I can still make a decision to love the people in my life. Um, It's not this out of control, whatever. So I'm telling you, it really helps. Because, you know, you don't do therapy so feelings go away. You you do them so you learn how to do it. So anyway, I bet some of you just had a Thanksgiving and you're like, oh, my God, I can't. I can't. And so maybe you can if if you do some therapy before Christmas. So. Let's do it. I love Talkspace. Talkspace.com slash Jen, J-E-N. It is the online therapy company for as little as $32 a week. You pick an experienced, licensed therapist that matches with you. You get to pick them. They're not just throw some guy at you and be like, you have to deal with Michael. And you're like, I hate him. It's not how it works. And each therapist has at least a master's degree, has completed 3,000 hours of supervised work. So these are the real deal. And people that use Talkspace have said they love it because it's private. You don't have to drive anywhere. It's like 80% cheaper than a therapy session in person. And you don't need insurance for it. And you won't need insurance for it because it's very 
inexpensive. So go to Talkspace.com slash Jen, and to show your support for this podcast, use code Jen, J-E-N, to get $30 off of your first month, okay? We need to take better care of ourselves this time of year so that we can take care of others. Put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on the kid. That is what therapy is. Take care of yourself. Talkspace therapists are fully licensed. They go through a rigorous screening process, and you pick your therapist based on your preferences. You can text, audio, video message, or even do a live video chat. Again, Talkspace.com slash Jen. Do it. 30 bucks off. All right. Get back to people talking about their favorite things. Favorite Christmas movie. It's a wonderful life. It's trite, I know, but I love every bit of it. I wish I had a million dollars. Hot dog. I know last year, my ex and I went to see It's a Wonderful Life at a movie theater in Los Angeles, and we got all dressed up, and he'd never seen it before, and I always love experiencing it with someone who'd never seen it, and I'm just like tears sobbing, and then my relationship was over two days later. Now, it had nothing to do with It's a Wonderful Life, but it was a wonderful Christmas Eve and an even better Christmas, and so imagine my shock. Um, so I don't know if I can handle watching It's a Wonderful Life this year. I feel in a really good place, and... You know, I don't think that this year I'm going to be like, well, I'm sad I miss him. But I think I might just be like, it is noted that a year has gone by. I've done a lot of work on myself. There's been a lot of tears and a lot of just figuring things out. And um, but I don't know if I can revisit that movie, but I probably can because it's meant something to me my whole life. As you know, I get very frustrated that, um, you know, George Bailey. Uh, I actually talked to Dr. Drew about this off air about the movie and um He was saying that he, I said, no, don't you have to compromise in a relationship? Like George Bailey wanted to travel the world and he never got to because he had to save his father's business. Then his brother went away and then he had the kids and then he lost the money somehow. And and that's why he wanted to kill himself because he was like, I just ruined everything. It would be better if I was never born. And then they take him through and they're like, no, you've impacted so many people. It's starting with this. You saved a life, blah, blah. And so we kind of get away from the fact that he wanted to be an explorer. Now, I get you don't always get to do what you want when you're a kid. But on their honeymoon, they were going to go away. And they're like, we've got money. We're going to go to the Caribbean and whatever. And then something happened. So at the end of the movie, everyone donates money to him. And his warrant for arrest is ripped up. And somebody makes a toast to George Bailey, the richest man in town. Now, I know they mean rich with family and love. But I also think he got, like, a lot of money. Um, And I'm wondering, like, did him and his wife go on a trip? Like, I just want George Bailey to get on a goddamn plane once in his life and see something. I think he deserves that because he gave Mary everything she wanted. She lives in that crappy old house. She got the kids, the loving husband. She wanted to live in that town. Ta- she got everything. Does he get anything, I wonder? And Dr. Drew's point of view was like, he learned that he loved his life. And I go, no, I got it. But aren't we allowed to have one thing from our dreams, you know, growing up? So I really would love to make just like a 10 minute, like director's cut where they see him traveling. And he's like, cool, I'm going to have a travel budget every year and try to go somewhere. And you know what, I actually don't want to be an explorer. It seems like a pain in the ass. Turns out I'm just a guy who wants to travel. And I had judgments about this being a filthy flea bag small town but I actually love it now and I feel like it's the biggest place in the world but also I wasn't wrong I love to travel and maybe my son will be an explorer or my daughter like I that's to me the perfect like if they just could do that during the credits so I could feel better about that because it, it just gah. favorite Christmas song oh holy night I have been I have so many people in my life who told me that that's their favorite Christmas song I don't get it it's I don't know. It's a, To me, it's like boring. I love Silent Night. That well, Don't even play that for me. I start crying. Oh, Holy Night's kind of like boring to me. But what it teaches them. Lee's favorite Christmas song. Three-way tie between I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. What the fuck is that? Grandma got run over by a reindeer and Hey Santa. I don't know the two of those. I can't understand. My favorite things. Please don't say my name. My favorite Christmas movie is Home Alone. Ah! My favorite Christmas song is Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree by Brenda Lee. That's a good one. Oh, by the way, if you guys want to mess, if anyone out there is related to anyone who's like, they don't say Merry Christmas anymore, Google Happy Holidays and and, and put 1940, 50. Bing Crosby, 
uh, all of those people had albums called Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays. I think it was Brenda Lee as well. Everything was Happy Holidays. There's a movie called Holiday Inn, although they sing White Christmas in it. But um, so just in case anyone in your family wants to pull that, I wish it was the old time when we could say Merry Christmas. People have always been saying both because even Christians, it's two holidays for us. It's it's uh, New Year's. It's a holiday season. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Let's get over it. Okay. Um, I really can't get into Christmas songs performed by pop singers. Me neither. Oh, my God. One time somebody um, in my ex-husband's family found out I loved Christmas music, but I was like, whoa, I'm talking Frank Sinatra, Nat King Cole, uh, the Phil Spector Christmas album. Uh, Leon Redbone, like that, and they got me like a Mariah Carey, and I was like, oh no, I cannot. I cannot. I can even do Wham's Last Christmas, but I don't even think of that as a Christmas song. It's like diehard to me. Like, you can listen to that anytime. Uh, I just don't feel like listening to it really anytime, but um, hi, Jen. I hope it's not too late. Here's my list Favorite Christmas movie, Love Actually. Okay. Aaron's shaking his head. Have you seen this movie? Yes. Have you seen it all the way through? Yes. I have, and I, I'm i not a movie snob because I've seen Devil Wears Prada 40 times. I know it's not some, you know, great yeah. film. Well, it's actually a pretty good movie. Yeah. Um, I've been on a plane, and I'm like, you know what? I want to zone out, and as my Chris friend Chris Vangela says, I'll look at some famous good-looking faces. Yeah. Uh, uh, sure. And and I get bored yeah. or, or confused or something happens, and I'm like, whatever. I cannot get past the first half hour. And I have a crush on Hugh Grant. Mm-hmm. I can't get through it. Yeah, there's some huge bummers in that movie. Is one of them his like super young assistant, and he's some kind of senator person in parliament? He's the prime minister. Is that weird? Yeah. Or she's not that much younger, or I don't remember what happened. She seems younger. <laughs> and I don't know what else. What's another bummer in that movie? Alan Rickman almost cheats on Helen. Uh, not Helen. Um, uh, the great Emma Thompson. Oh, okay. The great Emma. Thompson. Uh huh. Yeah. Well. That was me trying to figure out who she was and then came up. Now, you're name. upset with almost cheats on, but I would, I would say this is the point of the film, though, isn't it? Messy love relationships. No? Yeah, but as a great Christmas movie where everything kind of works out. Nah. Oh, got it. Yeah. Does everything work out at the end? No. She's like, she knows about it and she's mad at him. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> oh, see, that's, that's my kind of Christmas movie this year. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is actually... <laughs> That is oh. life, actually. Although I didn't also, get cheated on. Also, the the friend, the best friend, um, it's always cited as one of the most romantic scenes ever where it's like the friend of the newly married couple who proposes his love to the girl with the cards, you know? He holds up oh, the is card. that what that's from? Yeah, yeah. It's the guy from Walking Dead. Okay. It's the guy holding the cards. Yeah. That's, that's wrong. And that's, you think that scene is not romantic? No, that's terrible. You think it's stalkerish, or you're yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So they'd broken up, and she was like, "I want nothing to do." No, with No, they you. never dated. He was just the best friend of the groom, basically. Oh, so yeah. he just, without even a kiss. Yep. Without even a, maybe they're not compatible. I have mm-hmm. a crush on you. I'm proposing with cards. Mm-hmm. Does she say yes? No. <laughs> She's just like flattered. Ah. <sighs> but it's like, and it's just her secret between him and her, and the wow. friend doesn't know, and it's just like. Well, that well now we, we can never hang out. Wow! Do you know that you are making this movie so appealing to me right now? Because <laughs> okay. I want to see a bunch of things not work out. Like that is awesome. That is so funny. Yeah, you can't hang out with that person ever again. No. And it's not even that. No, you could hang out with a friend that says I have a crush on you, and you're like, oh, I don't. And maybe it's weird for a while, and they meet someone, and yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. But that. Yeah. No. no, no, no. Oh my God, that's so fucking funny oh we have to go um what was i gonna say love actually my favorite movie oh you know what movie i love it's so because i love that it doesn't work out in the end even though i think it should is my best friend's wedding like her behavior julia roberts behavior is so bad i can't remember what she does she sends like an email that's fake she tries to break up her best friend and his the girl and the girl represents every kind of sort of sexist but also kind of true like if a guy you like that you have everything in common with and everything's awesome, they always sort of seem to like this dumb person. And you're like, what about me? And it's like, why? I don't like the movie because I'm like, why isn't he wired to like his best friend? But then she's so like unforgivable in it that you kind of go, 
It's actually the perfect movie. She's so unforgivable that you're like, I guess it makes sense that he doesn't go with her. But she's so human that you're like, oh, I don't want her to have a bad life. And so she just sort of, her gay best friend, Rupert Everett, shows up at the reception and he dances with her. And I'm sobbing because she doesn't get what she wants and she has to move on. And, you know, it's beautiful. I, I don't know why I love that movie. It's not a Christmas movie. I also have a weird thing about Julia Roberts that I'll watch anything she does. And I've heard she's not a nice person. I don't care. I literally don't care. She can be as mean as she wants to be. Okay, well, you know what? I'm, 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 Christmas song that makes me cry. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Shut it down. I can't listen to that song either. I mean, my my favorite Christmas movie is a guy who's not a nice person, Chevy Chase, and Holiday Vacation. It's called Holiday Vacation. Christmas. Oh, okay. Um, There's a war on Christmas. I don't know if you know. It's Christmas Vacation. Oh yeah, and that you know I don't normally like comedy holiday movies, but that one I'm I'm okay with. Yeah. Um, Bad Santa, like, I get it. I don't think people are stupid if they like it, yeah. but I can't watch it. Hmm. Elf, to me, is funny, but I think it's, I still cry at the end. I cry every time. I don't know why. Anything, oh, God, anything where a bunch of people come together and they believe and then something magical happens, you got me. And it's New York, and we just love New York. Um we just love New York. We That's how I refer to myself as we now. Okay, there is thousands of emails. And I really think if you guys will allow it, the rest of the month, well, it's not December yet, but except for next week where I'm narrating a movie, I think the rest of December is going to be your listener emails of favorite things. And if Die Hard is a Christmas movie, because um, I really, I really think, uh, oh, God. Yes, Eastern Time. I am landing 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Sorry. So anyway, my friends, I will tell you this. Um, I lost my train of thought. I will tell you this. I have to end the episode. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, before you go, if you're really watching this, uh, bobblebar.com, B-A-U-B-L-R, B-A-U-B. L E bar dot com. Thirty five percent off. Cyber thirty five. Cyber Monday. My necklace collection. It goes away. It goes away in December. So just do it. Just fucking do it. Get someone a gift. Don't be such a grinch. All right. And with that, until next week, have fun. Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize how late I kept going. <laughs>